Hello, I'm Jashikins, and welcome to another episode of Jash Reads. Tonight, we're continuing Chapter 4 from Mockingjay by Susan Collins. In the hospital, I find my mother, the only one I trust to care for them. It takes her a minute to place the three, given their current condition, but already she wears a look of consternation. And I know it's not a result of seeing abused bodies, because they were her daily fare in District 12, but the realization that this sort of thing goes on in 13 as well. My mother was welcomed into the hospital, but she's viewed as more of a nurse than a doctor, despite her lifetime of healing. Still, no one interferes when she guides the trio into an examination room to assess their injuries. I plan myself on a bench in the hall outside the hospital entrance, waiting to hear her verdict. She will be able to read in their bodies the pain inflicted upon them. Gail sits next to me and puts an arm around my shoulder. She'll fix them up. I give a nod, wondering if he's thinking about his own brutal flogging back in 12. Plutarch and Fulvia take the bench across from us, but don't offer any comments on the state of my prep team. If they had no knowledge of the mistreatment, what do they make of this move on President Coyne's part? I decide to help them out. I guess we've all been put on notice, I say. What? No. What do you mean? Asks Fulvia. Punishing my prep team's a warning, I tell her. Not just to me, but to you, too, about who's really in control and what happened if she's not obeyed. If you had any delusions about having power, <laughs> I'd let them go now. Apparently, a capital pedigree is no protection here. Maybe it's even a liability. There is no comparison between Plutarch, who masterminded the rebel breakout, and those three beauticians, says Fulvia icily. I shrug. If you say so, Fulvia. But what would happen if you got on Coin's bad side? My prep team was kidnapped. They can at least hope to one day return to the capital. Kill and I can live in the woods. <laughs> but you? <laughs> Where would you two run? Perhaps we're a little more necessary to the war effort than you give us credit for, says Plutarch, unconcerned. Of course you are. The tributes were necessary to the games, too, until they weren't, I say. And then we were very disposable, right, Plutarch? That ends the conversation. We wait in silence until my mother finds us. They'll be all right, she reports. No permanent physical injuries. Good. Splendid, says Plutarch. How soon can they be put to work? Probably tomorrow, she answers. You'll have to expect some emotional instability. After what they've been through, they were particularly ill-prepared coming from their life in the capital. Weren't we all, says Plutarch. Either because the prep team's incapacitated or I'm too on edge, 
Plutarch releases me from Mockingjay duties for the rest of the day. Gail and I head down to, the, to lunch, where we're served bean and onion stew, a thick slice of bread, and a cup of water. After Venia's story, the bread sticks in my throat, so I slide the rest of it onto Gail's tray. Neither of us speaks much during lunch, but when our bowls are clean, Gail pulls up his sleeve, revealing his schedule. I've got training next. I tug up my sleeve and hold my arm next to his. Me too. I remember that training equals hunting now. My eagerness to escape into the woods have only for two hours overrides my current concerns. An immersion into greenery and sunlight will surely help me sort out my thoughts. Once off the main corridors, Kale and I race like school children for the armory. And by the time we arrive, I am breathless and dizzy. A reminder that I'm not fully recovered. The guards provide our old weapons, as well as knives and a broth sack that's meant for a game bag. I tolerate having the tracker clamped to my ankle, try to look as if I'm listening when they explain how to use the handheld communicator. The only thing that sticks in my head is that it has a clock, and we must be back inside 13 by the designated hour, or our hunting privileges will be revoked. This is one rule I think I will make an effort to abide. We go outside into the large, fenced-in training area beside the woods. Guards open the well-oiled gates without comment. We would be hard-pressed to get past this fence on our own. Thirty feet high and always buzzing with electricity, topped with razor-sharp curls of steel. We, we move through the woods until the view of the fence has been obscured. In a small clearing, we pause and drop back our heads to bask in the sunlight. I turn in a circle. My arms, extended at my sides, revolving slowly set so as not to set the world spinning. The lack of rain I saw in 12 has damage the plants here as well, leaving some with brittle leaves, building a crunchy carpet under our feet. We take off our shoes. Mine don't fit right anyway, since in the spirit of waste not one not that rules 13, I was issued a pair someone had outgrown. Apparently, one of us walks funny, because they're broken in all wrong. We hunt <laughs> like in the old days, silent, needing no words to communicate because here in the woods we move as two parts of one being, anticipating each other's movements, watching each other's backs. How long has it been? Eight months? Nine? since we had this freedom. It's not exactly the same, given all that's happened and the trackers on our ankles and the fact that I have to rest so often. But it's about as close to happiness as I think I can currently get. And that's it for tonight, folks. Again, if you're going to comment below no spoilers, you know, minor things are okay, but big spoilers are no-no. And since this, at least from, you know, the current, <laughs> current point we've reached in the book, you know, so such as you can spoil all of chapter two now, fine with that. You spoil later chapters or later parts of the current chapter? No. And of course, since this is the third book in a trilogy, 
feel free to spoil Catching Fire and the Hunger Games, because this is the third book in the series, folks. <laughs> yeah. Sally's still doing well, still being a crazy little birdie. She did last night, I uh, guess what we're calling the James Bond role now. Okay. Now it comes to the part of the video where we, where I take a shot of sake, and since I don't have a actual shot glass anymore, I just drink a random amount of sake and ta-da. So you can do the same, where you can take an actual shot, you know, find your favorite beer, uh, vodka, whatever. Or just anything lying around. And for those of you who don't drink alcohol for any various number of reasons, you know, take a shot of milk, water. No. And uh, let's see, what should this? Let's um, take a shot to Cadness being really happy for once. Or as happy as she can get. <sighs> Sushi place I went to recently did not have sake. It's like, yeah, the bill was cheaper, but it's like, I, when I have sushi, I need my sake. It just, it, it's not the same to me. And if my fiance were ever to watch this, he'd be his ad he'd probably go, oh god damn it, not again. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I am, you know, still collecting bloopers, and bloopers will be out Friday or Saturday. And if you have, you know, liked my dramatic reading and want to read the book for yourself, either because you're like, I just gotta see what happens next I can't wait till she puts out another video or you just want to read the book for yourself because this is an adaptation this I'm deciding where to do inflection sometimes I fuck up and sometimes I don't put that in the blooper I'm just like I already made three or four bloopers already I'm just like I just need to get through this and, you know, just inflections, how I decide characters should talk. You know, it's all interpretation of the text. So, you know, if you need, so if you want to read the actual book, you know, for that reason, or you just can't wait to see what happens next, and you also want to help support me, if you're watching on the YouTube, link is in the description. And... If you're watching this on my bloggy blog, an ad is at the bottom of the post. Woot! And until next video, goodbye.